here to talk about Matty, Matty, one of his suits the best. So the first thing, what's Netty? It's like it's everywhere, but it's nowhere, it's like why everything. So if you, if you read, but I have to read this, it's like Netty is an asynchronous event driven network application framework for rapid development of Mante for rapid development of maintainable high performance for the world servers and clients. So it's like a bold statement and it's really hard to guess what is really saying this. So maybe a picture fix this. So you got this picture from the website. Like, okay, but what is this thing? I thought that it was, I don't know, a web server or something like that, like performance or I don't know. It didn't make sense what it says here, but it's like for starters, it's like really hard. So let's try again and keep reading. You keep reading and you get Netty is a NIO, NEO, client server framework which enables quick and easy development of network applications such as protocol servers and clients. It really simplifies and streamlines network programming such as TCP and UDP socket server. And you say, oh my, I was just looking for a fast web server or something, or I don't know, it's like a lot of word hype, a lot of words with a lot of hype here. So it's like, okay, my first guess like three years ago was like, okay, I'm gonna pass because this is like really hard and I'm not getting what it says. So whatever. And that almost happened like three years ago when we started with Mark with uh, all the real-time meeting stuff and the really low latency thing. And we said, okay, what I'm not really getting here is really the basics. So you have to really get the basics to understand what Ned is saying here that it does. So let's go for the freaking basics. It's like, okay, you've heard of async apps, event driven frameworks, You've heard of non-blocking operations. You even heard of Node Schooler because whatever it does, and it's faster, it's better, it's better. But why? It's everything here. It's all the same. They are all always talking about I/O all the time. This is all about I/O in I/O in, in in the way of low-level operations. And it's not that hard. And I/O is everywhere. If you imagine that you're reading from a disk drive, that's I.O. If you are uh, executing some RPC, that's I.O. You're sending files over a network, that's I.O. So you can think about I.O. It's anything that happens between the CPU and the memory. Okay, everything that happens there, that's I.O. So what's the typical approximation to I.O.? You have a separate, you have a CPU memory and a device. This is this is I.O. So. What's the typical thing to do? You execute a read from whatever thing, you wait for that read to happen, and then you keep working. Okay, when it returns, you go with it. And the, the same thing with a write operation. Read or write, doesn't matter. So what happens here? Our program is blocking. It's waiting for that operation to finish. We can say that our program blocks while the, combination, all the communication is in progress. And this type of I.O. is the regular I.O. that you, you, you may know it as blocking I.O. or even all I.O. in Java terms or synchronous I.O. It's all the same. It's just when you block. Okay, so what's the problem here? The problem here is that you have a lot of resources wasted. Is that what, while you're waiting, you have most of your resources wasted I.O. just waiting for something to happen. That means that your processor your processor yeah, is doing nothing but just waiting for I.O. to finish. And that's, that's not cool. It's that you know what is the big thing here. You're all the time waiting. But imagine this. The typical web server, Tomcat or old Tomcat or whatever, WebSphere, whatever thing. You get a request, okay? For, for example, you get a request. For, a, for every request you have to handle, you have to read something from the database and you're waiting for that to happen. So your code is blocking to finish that time. In that period of time, you're dedicating a lot of memory here and process time just for, just waiting. So, okay, we said, ah, this is Java, we can do a lot of things, you know, about parallelism, so let's go for that. What's parallelism in Java? New thread, or execute service, or whatever suits you best. So that's what a typical web server does. It's, it's like every new thread, it's like a, a request to handle, so you have a new thread, so it's something like this. You put in a box, this box is a thread, and you get another thread for another connection, and all this, and you get a mess. <laughs> That's what happens with most of typical web servers. This is not optimal, and even in more under stress situations, most threads are consuming even more memory in CPU. 
So we can do better. What's better is instead of doing a read here and waiting, it's just we, we issue this call, this desired call, and instead of waiting until it's finished, you imagine this, this, this will end sometime and you keep working and one, someone is going to notify you once this operation finished. So you can keep working. You can keep doing your stuff. And you did all this some kind of way. You did listeners. You did, you use Wala 7 bus for pops up and not wait for that. Or you even use JavaScript callbacks. All that stuff is the, is the, is the same principle that's used in many patterns like dependency injection is the Hollywood principle that don't call us, we'll call you. Same with dependency injection, same here. When we finish this IO operation, we will come back to you and call you, maybe. So, what happens here? You keep working instead of waiting all the time. But keep in mind that even your operations depend on that IO actually finish sometimes. But you don't have to wait for that. You can keep working. So your resources are not wasted for that. So you have async IO or any other names like Neo or NIO, whatever. The thing that this says is that this allows you to build more multi-threading, more robust and more scalable applications. So in the Java world that we're talking about now, what's this? You have Neo with Java, okay? Neo is not a Java thing, it's like your OS has to provide you some ways to implement this kind of asynchronous operations. Okay, there's many different examples, like for example with, e with Unix, you have polling, you have signals, you have select loops, even Windows has uh, support for callbacks, you have many things. Okay, and Java provides that with a package. The package is called java.nio, it's really straightforward. So, but this started to happen since version 1.4, 2002, it's like, this is not new stuff. Okay, we have, we've had this for more than 10 years. And even since uh, version 1.7, you have NIO2. That's, it's the same, but with more goodies and more uh, file APIs change and whatever. But what happens here when you're doing this kind of code? If you program with JavaScript, listeners, or whatever, you introduce a high level of complexity. It's a lot of more, your program will be much more complex to, to build than that. Even if you, you try to do NIO just with Java using Selector API, that's a mess and it's really, really hard. So this is where comes Nelly. Nelly is just built on top of Java NIO and more packages like Java.net, Java NIO, the second thing. It's just plain Java for you dependency haters that you don't like big jars and all that kind of stuff. It's just Java 1.6. It's nothing more than that. But with one big difference that all Nelly APIs are asynchronous. Are asynchronous. All, all Nelly defines, they, all the API is just asynchronous in nature. It doesn't matter what. That's, so what that does, what's that mean, really? It's, it's more, it can be one tool. You can implement a server, but you can implement, just use it for whatever you want. So, the big thing here is like, you have a, a tool for doing something that we, we really, we're starting to guess what, what it will be, do, will, what we'll be doing, but is you can think about this like Wava or Apache Commons or something like that. So, but what the hell is Nelly for? So it's we're here to talk about Nelly. So think, every time you got HTTP everywhere, it's like HTTP is for everything, for sending large files, for building, for building web services, for doing REST APIs, but that's not true. It's like HTTP is not always the right answer to everything. You can, just like email works with SMTP or you can send packets with UDP, it's like, you know, you have another example. For example, for example, StatsD is like the daemon that uses to collect metrics and then send them to Graphite. It's like it's built on, on UDP, so if there's no HTTP there, for example. So, more than you think, once you, you're, you've been trying to implement some kind of protocol. And I think that happened more to all of us more, than, more often than you think. It's like, Think about mobile messaging, on our case, real-time changes between our servers, or, or even just an, a plain old RC, RPC call. It's in another server, you just want to invoke something up somewhere else. You're doing tricks just to do that in your own way. So it, it's like implementing a protocol. 
So finally, let's say hello to Nettie. And what, what's Nettie, really? It's a tool to implement network applications. You can think network applications or a web server or whatever you suit your best, it's just for network operations. And you can build both from server side code and client and client side code. And, and the thing here is that Neo is everywhere. So why you have to use Netty? So we have to read again from the website. Netty has been designed carefully with the experience and from the implementation of a lot of protocols such as FTP, SMTP, HTTP, and various binary and text-based legacy protocols. As a result, as a, as a result, Netty has succeeded to find a way to achieve. To achieve what? Ease of development, performance, stability. Mm -hmm. I'm sounding like a sales guy now, but believe me, flexibility without compromise. And but this is true. What we found that this is really true. From from our experience, is that this is true in every way. When once you get used to the NAT API and you start changing the way you think about uh, calls and all that stuff, you you will see that you are really rapidly developing that that things. And the thing here is that implementing a protocol sounds something that may be boring or something that I'm not here to do that, but it's not that hard. It's, it's not, it's, it's sometimes you're already doing that always, so, but you not, don't name it protocol. You, you put some nice name there, but it's like a protocol. So, but the thing here is also that most common protocols are out of the box already implemented because some of them are really, really, really hard to get. For example, you have boring protocols like HTTP, SSL, UDP, all of this is already there. But you have more cooler protocols as SPV, HTTP2, it's already implemented in Netty. I have PM proto buffers. Even you have Memcache, they're implemented in Netty. I don't know, it's like, there's everywhere. But Netty is not only IO. It has a really powerful thread model that we will see later with examples. So, all, right now I'm selling you Netty just because, yes, but we'll see examples why later, but there's some downsides here. It's, it's, it's the, most, the most downers are you have constant API changes since version 3 to 4 to 4.1 to 5, even more basic things change, but it's for the best. They are always just trying to implement it, do it easier. It has a learning curve that it's not easy, but it's there. You have to buy it in action actually to really get everything that it does. And you can join the mailing list, for example, and you'll see how stupid you are because you're not getting there, anything there. But you will <coughs> learn a lot in the end. So it's like a good point to, to be there, just to, just to start what people are talking about. So I don't get presentations without code, so let's start doing some netty code, and our, everything I'm saying to you will make more sense. We implement a protocol, the daytime protocol, that it's, it's cooler because it's like an, has an RF, RF, RFC page. It's like you always want to see this. And this is a protocol that just when you open a connection there, it, said, it sends you the date without doing anything more. It closes the connection. It's all that it does. So let's build a server to build this. What's this? In Netty, you have to get really used to the ter terminology that is very similar in every in Vertex and Ratpack and all these frameworks, they are using the same terminology, most of them. Here you have handlers. A handler is just a class that you have to extend. It, it, this is where you actually write your business code. Your logic is here. So it's just that. Handler is a business, it's your logic code. Then you have a channel handler, handler operation for the channel. And you gotta think a channel is a connection. Okay, there's one more generic way of telling that, but it's just a connection. So you have like an inbound handler here. Okay, an inbound handler handles incoming traffic. Okay, everything that comes there, it, it handles incoming traffic and send that traffic to the next handler. You can start thinking about even driving and things here. But if you have inbound handlers, you have also outbound handlers. It's the same, but in the other direction. So this gives you the the sense of like, there's like a pipeline of handlers doing things here. So, inbound and outbound, before version, in version three, they were called upstream and downstream. So that, that here's like the first big change that maybe you use Netty three, and it changed a little bit. But this doesn't stop here, because right now they have deprecated. This, this, and for it's not true anymore. 
because in version 5.0 it's already replicated. And it just they have just merged these two things in one handler and make things easier. This is from version 4.0, 4.1. This is what you get now. It's a stable release, so this is what you have to deal really in your day-to-day -day work. So, okay, you have the handler, but this handler has methods. We need to hook up in some method there to do our protocol. Okay, the RPC says that once a connection is established, the current date and time is sent up to that connection. So, you can think that the handler has a, uh, like a, a way of, of uh, life cycle, okay? You have, it's very, very, very simplified. In this case, you have the channel read, that, what does it say? When you, when you start receiving that data, you, this method will be invoked. But what happens here, we, that's, what, that's not what we really want. What we want really is when the channel is active, so we are getting a connection, we, we will send that out that data. So when you, if you implement this code, this method, you just override it, and this, this method will be called when well, the channel is open. So let's start doing our stuff. So you just get the date in whatever format you like. This is Jota time, let's use Jota or whatever. You get the date, you have a string with the date that you want to send out. Okay, this is the code to actually send the, code, the, the, the thing back to the, to the server. And it's like, it's really clear, right? It's a really straightforward code. Let's, let's, let's think about what's happening here. We're all talking all the time about networks. And networks has like a standard unit of working that's a byte. You have to deal with bytes. And it's okay, but you, you said that this was fun. So I don't want to be handling bytes everywhere. You know, maybe Mark wants because they love byte things. <laughs> but that's not at all. But whatever. So Nelly gives you out of the box two really cool things, and one is called ByteBuff and the ByteBuff util, because there's no class without a util. So ByteBuff is like a container to, just to hold bytes. And maybe you know this already from Java, because Java has ByteBuff per. So it's the Java implementation. This is the same, but with less caveats that you have to know. If you, if you ever use ByteBuffer, you have to slice and do some really hard things to get, but this here is just much simpler to do. So, you have here the byte buff util, and it gives you a method just to encode the string, that's what we are trying to do. We want to have a string and encode that string to bytes and send it back. It's okay, here starts the fun. You have to allocate some space. Why do I have to allocate some space? Because like, this is like really low level things that you have to do with many, but it's actually worth it. Here it's just easy, it's just you are providing with a channel handler context, so it's like your context for that channel, and then you just allocate some space. What's the good thing about this is that many is all the time is keeping internal, internal pools just to reuse the space, and everything that happened, that, that you already like reserved the space, they will try to reuse it all the time, and try to prevent things like context switching that it's really hard, or memory leaks that you will get when you're trying to write your own byte arrays or your things. So once you have the byte buff util and the, you have the string, you have to write, actually write the message. When you write the message, the, the, you, there's two flavors of this method. You have context.write, and a write is just, it's just write the message, but then you have to flush it. But if you just write it, Nelly won't, won't actually flush the data back to the channel if you don't tell him to do that. So you have to actually flush it, because maybe you, you may want to issue one write and hold all that writes and just do the flush once, for example. Here, just straightforward and just, just have to do it all together. So okay, you have your handler in place that it's, it's able to receive a connection and send back data to the, to the, to the client. So let's bootstrap the server. And bootstrap in a server is just this. The main mm -hmm. class, that you just build here with a main method, and here is where you go the, the fun stuff. So, have you run this? It just, this is just Java jar, your fat jar, it's there. You, you if you want to call this a microservice, you can do it, I think. But who read here the Fowler article about microservices? Someone? Okay, I don't know what I think any, anything <laughs> anymore about this. <laughs> you don't call it microservices, let's call it. If not, just a 
server that works, you don't have class loading issues or logger problems or things like that. You just forget about that and you have something here working easy. So you have this and you have to, to start to implement the run operation here to actually bootstrap the server. Okay, I think here is where Nelly comes in again. <coughs> here you see that there's an event loop group. What's an event loop group? An event loop group is Nelly's way to handle threads. I told you before that Nelly has a powerful thread model. You can think like this is like the Nelly's way to an executor service from the JDK, but with many, many power apps. Then you have the event loop. And one event loop contains some, no sorry, an event loop group contains some event loops. And an event loop can handle many channels. This is really, right? You're not getting anything, I'm not getting anything. So the thing here is what's really Nelly doing here? The big thing here is, is when you receive a connection, when you have one channel here that is registered, registered to one event loop. Okay, it's assigned to that event loop that is living inside an event loop group. What's happening here is that once this channel is assigned here, it, it, it will always get executed for that same event loop. Okay, all IO operations will be handled here with that same connection in the same thread. Because what the problem here, the big thing here is this one, okay? That's because you're always trying to, so you're always using the same thread, you're preventing a lot of quantum switching between between context, so it's it's really it's more cheaper way to do this. So you can say with this that some event loop instances here can handle with running always in the same thread can handle many channels. Okay, so you have more than one connection here. Instead of having one thread for channel, you have many channels, many instances here running in the same event loop. And this immutability is the key. Okay, this is the thing that that makes. Nelly's thread model work, and, and the same one that other ones are using because they are using Nelly uh, inside. And even here in the vertex call, if you went there, uh, they are even using the same defaults to use Nelly. So it's like, I don't know. What happened here really is that it changed since version three. It was not this way, but now it changed and it evolved. And this is the actual pattern that you, they are following. It's really, really useful and it's using, and it's it's working. And you don't have to worry about this. You just, just put it this way and it will work. You don't have to worry about this. So. Okay, so we have our event loop group here, but we have two event loop groups for this. Okay? Here you have the boss group and the work group. The boss group is the one that is accepting connections. Okay, it's the one that's always getting connection. And the worker group is the one that actually will handle the work once that connection is accepted. Okay, maybe this one rejects the connection for whatever reason and this one will not see that connection. But when this assigned, the, when the boss group registers that connection, we handle to the worker group, and will be assigned to the event loop, and it will always be run there in the same event loop. So okay, we have, we have, yep. Well, we have another thing here that's an IO event loop group. It used to be there, but it's gone. But here you have to, have to choose the implementation that you want to use for event loop because you have many implementations here. And for example, for this example, we're using AIO, it's a regular one, so it will work for this example. So when you have a, that, that thing in place, you have to actually call the server bootstrap because we're bootstrapping our server, so the API is very clear. So we assign both event loops to, to this server, okay? And here's the new thing. Now, we are used, we're building a TCP protocol, okay? It works over with a TCP IP, so we have to, to do that. And here in Eddy, you just have to implement a channel that is using a socket. So we are using a NIO server socket channel. After that, you just bind an address, a local address, and you can set some socket options because you may want to try this. Here option, this option is just uh, telling the maximum queue length for incoming connection, right? So we are getting more than a hundred connections. They will the, the connection will be refused. But the good thing here is that this restriction it doesn't happen in the JVM or Netty. It's just an OS thing. Okay, it's like a platform dependent platform dependent dependent option that you can put back to Netty and just the OS will handle it to you. So we are almost there. Okay, we need. 
to execute our actual code, the handler, how you put up the handler here. You need to create the handler with the VS the bootstrap so that you created before. You have to create the channel initializer. It's a lot of boilerplate, but it's always the same. And you have to create a pipeline here. A pipeline is the way that you define your application workflow in A. So well, we, what we are doing here is that once, when we receive a connection, this method, well, this pipeline, this method will be executed every time. So if you put a, like here, like a log, like hello, it will, for every connection, will print hello, okay? It's actually executed. And here, what we, are, what we are doing is adding handlers to our pipeline. So what, when we receive a connection, what we are gonna do? The first thing that we are doing here is using an out-of-the-box uh, handler that's called login handler that it's really really nice and it really it's really helpful to use to understand what is netting working how netting works and I really recommend you to use it if you are trying to understand what netting is doing but don't use that in production but it will blow up your server but it's, it's a nice thing to try but after that you add the second pipeline okay and the second handler sorry that's our handler the thing that we did first we put it here, so when a connection comes in, it does this, execute this handler, this handler probably will, will execute a write or something, or, or will just do a flash to the next, uh, sorry, a flash, no, or will fire an event to the next handler, and this one will get executed. So, now it's almost working. We have to actually use this API, that it's like, you have to bind actually the the server and execute sync and this will get executed and your server will be will be working. Okay, now if you I don't want I won't want to execute this, but if you execute this, you can connect to the server via telnet, you do a telnet here and it will send back the response. Just straightforward. Okay, but here there are many things that are a key idea. Okay, but here it says channel future. There's a lot of things that we can talk about Nelly, but I can do that all that on one talk so it's just, there's a lot of KIA that happened here. It's like all the future API, it's not here. It's the Netting API, the Netting API is really huge and you have a lot of concepts. When you get all the concepts, they are really straightforward. The Bible API is really, it's really big and you have to deal with that. You have all the codecs, all the codecs are like HTTP, all, all, all that things. Oh, no, sorry, this is like the way you encode uh, your messages. We did, you use Bible for you to, in code stream, but there's more uh, complex things like code and HTTP response. So that's a codec, and you will use one that is provided out of the box. You have different transports, you have cool things like zero file copy. That's also the same thing that trying to prevent context switching between data, and all that things will get faster. That's a good thing, for example, for a file server, that you need to, to do some really uh, fast stuff. And we can also, we build the server, and we could also create some client code. Okay, we can use the same pretty similar API to create the client and instead of using internet, just send back our uh, our request with that. So this is boring, so let's go to the real life insight. So what happened with us or what worked with us. So we're using Nelly for real time meeting, for real time meeting that Mark explained before. If you you're not you weren't here it's just a protocol uh, for ad, ad changes to beat, and you have to beat always below, below 100 milliseconds, and you have to always have an SLA of bigger than 85% of the request. So, this is actual our bootstrap code, okay? It's the same one that I showed you, but here you can see that we have like a lot of options here, that just to test, because you, when you're doing these kind of things and you really wanna get low latencies, you have to test them. You here have we use the NIO server socket channel, for example, here, but you can use another kind of event loop. Well, the event loop is not here, but it's, it's related to this. Before, you can choose which kind of NIO what you want to use. You can use the pod, for example, that's implemented directly in the system, and Navi will use GenAI to use actually the real pod from, from your OS. So, the thing here is that you don't have to be afraid of low level, right? Here, you, you always hear that you have to understand your domain. But here, our domain is that we really need to be really, really fast and we need to understand what it's doing. And we just have to do the, the actual work that we need, nothing else. 
So that's what's happening here, for example. Here we have an, uh, a code that is, here it's, uh, this protocol is HTTP. You get a request, this is a, a provided code that we didn't implement, but the next step that is broken, here is a, 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 an own code that we have to take that request, that it has a body, and that body is a protobuf, for example. You have to decode that protobuf. So, the thing is that you have to explore what's inside any all the time, but this, that's, this is really in the end pays off. And for example, another thing that worked for us, it was like, you have to integrate things that you love. In my case, I love Jews since ever, and it came out because I didn't get anything about the AI, and I had to get that and really change that. So you maybe start wondering, okay, let's search for Nelly Jews integration, like we would do like Nelly Ibernate, Nelly, I don't know, many things. Here it's just straightforward because you are doing the news manually, so you, you can use juice, for example, if you want. You just inject here your provider for these instances and you're getting one new instance every time. And just this is actual code and you have to do nothing else here. We did some parameter checks here, if we, we have to measure everything, so we did some micro benchmarks here, so it was, we, we went from nanoseconds to a little more nanoseconds, so it was, okay, we can handle this. Yeah, that it pays off in the end to really have juice in the middle. So, the thing is, but this is fast or is it not fast? Because in the end, this is what we are, what I'm trying to sell you here. So, this is our response time. Matt, Matt said before it was five, but it's two, my friend. Now, because five is the average, we got a different, we got different kinds of uh, servers. The, the most, the more, the, the better, the best. The best performance servers have this average latency without, sorry, this response time without network latency. And here, the thing is that you have to always be measuring your your performance. Here, we are using StatsD to to actually. Here, we had a thing called Timer Handler that is measuring this, for example. Okay, measuring how how much time are we spending in this. So. We have two milliseconds here, okay, but what are you talking about? It's like, what kind of volume are you handling? Because maybe this is, okay, this is fast, but you're not doing things. Like Max said before, we're handling over 10,000 QPS. So it's like 10,000 requests per second in our peaks, and nothing happens here. Everything keeps working. And for example, if we go even uh, lower level, have one node, can handle more than 300 QPS. So we are, we are like, Overscale here because we will see that we have more servers than that. And this is a, a node with a four CPUs, uh, four CPUs with eight gigabytes of RAM. The thing here is that uh, somebody asked before, how do you handle the garbage collection things and all those kind of things? We will see that uh, that this is uh, this is introduces you some kind of different problems that we will see now. So. The problem here is that you you got this. You all know we are the best things, the best guys in the world. We are really performant, but you are asking, but this is a lot, or is it's not? You, know, you don't know if you are performant or not. So let's be try to be pretentious and read this, and you get a blog post from Parse that it was from Ruby to Go that they said that a year ago, uh, at the end of 2002, 2012, they had 200 API servers running very large instances, 200. 3,000 requests per second. So it's like, okay, well, this is like a metric, it's, it's there. So we have 16 nodes. It's like, okay, we are like really, really cool here because we have four, just four Nelly nodes to handle 10,000 QPS and we have 10 extra nodes just to handle other stuff. But I know that this is not fair. This is like a wrong example, but it's really good stuff for your ego because it's like you just have a part, a really small part of that in your application or in your infrastructure. So it's like, I don't know, I know that this math doesn't make sense because you can compare going from Ruby to Go and then compare it with your Java stuff. It's like stupid. I know, so don't get mad at me for that. I'm not able to get punched, but I don't know, this is good stuff for you. And if you have conflicts, like you, you really have really metrics about your Java servers doing similar things to us. I'm really happy to share with you more, more insight about this because we are blind when you are dealing with this stuff. So besides that, you have a, like a log ecosystem. Somebody asked 
yesterday what's Ratpack or something like that. Ratpack is like it's uh, abstraction to use Netty in more in a HTTP way, in a HTTP web server way. If you want to build a REST API, I will use Ratpack for example because it has some nice goodies there. The API is really really similar to Netty, just a really lightweight, straightforward framework that is there. Well, you have a lot of users that are using now net internally, even Vertex that we, we heard before, we heard yesterday, or even Aka, then everyone knows Aka, that's inside they are using net. So, the thing is that net in the end will change the way you are programming your apps. Because even if you're not using net directly, you're using Vertex, you're using Aka, you're using, I don't know, uh, Ratpack, whatever, you always have to think about what's happening there in some way of other way of how do I write back my response, what's happening here. So with this, you have the new async problem, because async, it has a, like a page, a page of there. It's like, for example, Mark talked about the snowball effect. You can have, for example, when we are fine, one machine is handling, I don't know, 500 connections. But then you get that machine is happening to 500 connections to 90,000. Like, okay, what's happening here? What's happening here is that Maybe you get an out-of-memory error, but what's happened here is that Ned is trying to get all that traffic. Okay, he's trying to, to handle all of that. So you're, what's happening here in our case, it was that instead of failing, the system becomes slower, much more, much more slower. Because we, we have, we, we, you see that the response time went to nine milliseconds to seconds. So it was like, okay, what's happening here? The thing here is that uh, how do you, uh, I don't know how you um, try to get better than two milliseconds, okay? So we had, what we did here it was, okay, we had in the past, but really big servers, like 60 CPUs, something like that, and we noticed that we weren't using all that CPUs, okay? So what we did is was try to get the maximum performance per node based on the resources used. So for example, in our first CPU, uh, machines, we have like the perfect load, the maximum load will be eight, okay? So we try to measure how much uh, requests can handle a <coughs> node without being higher than eight, eight load, for example. And we try to box our, our things like that. So what this hap when this happens, when you have like 90,000 connections, what really is the, ser the, the node telling you the service or whatever is that you are on top of your of your of what that machine can 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 handle, you you can get better than that because you're already using all the CPU you can use, and you have other services like Redis in our case or StatD. There are more things happening there. In like your Java is like on top of what uh, what it can do. So the, the thing here is that you get things like too many connections. You have really low response times with an average load that it's fair you will have to buy more, more machines if you really want to scale out, if you are having this kind of problems with too many connections and, and all that kind of stuff. Because one thing that you will try to do is like, okay, let's look netty and let's look for set maximum connections, and that doesn't exist. Because here, is, is, there's, no, there's, there's, no, it's like, there's not a framework like Tomcat or like Jetty or all that kind of stuff that you have like a big config file and you can tune this kind of uh, of parameters because here it doesn't make sense to have a maximum number of connections because you're not measuring this this way. What you have to do this is that you have to, if you really want to handle this, you have to do it on your own. Okay, nobody did it. it, it I, so I guess it's for something. But we tried to do one because, okay, instead of all the bidders go crazy and all the servers go crazy, we thought, okay, stop and let's, let's start and say, okay just don't do nothing and try to recover yourself and we did that based on the actual response time not on the not on the number of connections alive so one more thing that it's the same thing that's saying that that was my my reasoning before like this morning like it's 5 a.m in the morning i was drunk and I had to say it and did you notice the, the, the wallpaper change here it's like the back, Apple background they, uh, they are always using. So this, this, this conference, I heard two times about, I don't know if the Vertex guy is here, or the, I don't know, no? Okay, there was another presentation, they, what they showed uh, benchmarks that it was putting Vertex on top of the, 
of the more performance servers or whatever. It happens that I am a big fan of that uh, test. So I tried, oh, sorry, I never saw that. Okay, let's go and see it. So I surprise first, so I had to do it. And I did this, and I click okay. Let's check the results. Let's check the results and I said, okay, this is some C++ stuff, that's the usual, uh, the usual suspects are, are, are up, and fine, and now it's here. I was like, okay, but where is Vertex? And if you know this, uh, this kind of uh, test are uh, doing, uh, there's like rounds, like this This is from April this year, you have round nine, right, round eight, it's like from previous years. I check on all of those, and I said, but where is Vertex? Vertex is here. But it's, but it's here, but because it says that it was removed at the request of the maintainer. So I was unable to find that slide that showed that Vertex is better performing than Nelly using Nelly inside. It's like they know something that maybe people doesn't know. But this is just kidding. It, I don't really care about this, so it was just for fun. So, so if you want, if you, you know where, where this happened, I, I, will, I will be happy to know it. But in the end, what's I mean, what's in the end, this is about having fun and you know, it's like Nelly is a big, it's a really cool stuff to implement and just Take it into account when you're trying to do something network related. So thank you all. I had to say this, but we are hiring and we're hiring Java positions and for Java, for Nelly, for for Hadoop. And thank you very much. And if you have questions, I'll likely try to answer them. Yeah. We are actually have long lived connections with HTTP, but they have the keep alive, for example, and this is like a uh, long lived connection. What happens here is that you have one event loop, and that event loop has many instances running on the same thread, but it's not instance per thread. It's like you have many instances of, some instances of event loop handling many instances of channel, and that's what's really scaling up. But what Nelly does is that he tries to, to be, be, be fair, trying to handle the the, the load balance in there. But even with this, now it's like a fixed thing, but in any 4.1 that it's now in beta, you can even tune these kind of things. If you want to, to know, to tell him how to handle these situations, you can tell him, for example. But not any longer, I mean, uh, my understanding is that in this version you're presenting is an IP channel, Yeah, yeah, this is the way, but yeah, yeah. You cannot really no. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's the thread model is this one. You can tune some things there, but you can actually change it. If I, maybe I'm wrong, but because this is changing every time, but that's the, that's the thing. But they are. This is the thread model that works, and it's that you can tune some things now. And you now can you can put in your thread factory, for example, and then you can do whatever you want with threads. One thing to notice here is that for in our example, for it's like. You have two groups, okay, like the boss group we, 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 we saw and the boss group, the worker, but here we have three. We have three <coughs> loop groups. Why? You have the third, uh, have the third loop group, the B group, okay? Why? Because this uh, group is the one actually doing the hard work, like go into Redis and maybe it may be blocked, the so range may be slower for whatever reason. So what you're trying to do here is just assign more resources to this kind of events. And here, the rule of thumb is to use always uh, two CPUs, uh, two per CPU number you have for thread, for the number of threads. But here is like a 
I think that it may be slower, so it's a valid thing to put it more threads. You can tune in how the the codecs or the, the handlers are, are where are they are executed. But the thread model about that when when a channel is assigned to a, an, a thread, the channel will always live in that thread. It's like Net is trying to prevent all that all that context switching between threads because that's why they learn in Netty three. In Netty three all the incoming connections were handled by the same threads, but when they, the response came back, it, it, doesn't have, it doesn't have to happen that way. So they learned that that didn't scale, for example. It's based on scaling, on, on, on performance issues, and lessons learned more than, yeah, maybe it's like a, one model for one thing for everything, but now you can tune out some things. Okay, thank you. I'm interested um, about how did you test your code? Yeah. Because uh, testing about this. applications should be a little bit different. Yeah. Here you have two options, okay? We are using juice, so you're using juice or dependency injection, you know that your class should be testable, okay? So you have your handlers that re receive the connections, okay? So the, the, sorry, the dependencies that a class has. So you have your handler, you can test it, for example, with Mojito or with a Spot. We are doing that. But the, trick, the, trick, the tricky thing here is that you have to actually uh, take all the context right, or all the channel handler context, you have to mock that up. But if you want to do, to do that, you can do that. Okay, that's one option that it maybe it suits you best, is you are like a, okay, this is a unit test, I can touch the network, I can touch the file system, you're like a fanatic of that, you're doing that, okay? You're mocking everything. But that's not actually the best thing. For me, a unit test is something that runs really fast. So I don't, it's, like, it's your touch in the file system, but it's really, really fast. It's fine for me because it's easier to actually write a file to simulate writing a file. So what Nelly offers you is like one kind of event loop group that it, he uses. It's like an, it's called all IO. No, embedded, sorry. It's like an embedded Nelly that you can boot up really, really fast. And you can actually fake some data here. So you're actually getting uh, uh, you're actually getting uh, data in a byte array in a byte buff, and you can get that data and do things with that. And your the thing here is that you are actually booting up an Eddy embedded server, but it's really really fast, and it's like the the best way to do it is that. So. Thank you so much. Thank you.